my drag is tightened down as tight as I can get it, spring, summer, winter, fall. I set the hook and I just, where are they gonna go? You take them off their fins, they're gonna poof. Then they fight on the ice. Otherwise you get them a chance to go over, try it sometimes. It, it's crazy, I mean, I, I did it because I have the luxury of hooking so many fish in the winter time that I just like to see what happens when I do certain things. And I learned that if I just crank them, because I, you know, if we're actually doing a TV show, I'll set the hook and I'll just, you know, you know when you can't. Sometimes all of a sudden they get get their balance back and try it, and then you might have. But soon as soon as a hook set comes, if you can just crank them as hard as you can, most of the time you never. They, they do all their fighting right on the ice. And you, that's, you know, it's kind of like what you do with these perch out here, isn't it? When you're using that little, little, that little uh, bead on the hook, what happens if you played with them? Same thing. You know, I mean, you bring them right up and poop on the ice, whoop, right on the ice. The same thing I'm doing with walleye. I don't care how big they are, 10 pounders, 12 pounders, they all come up that way. If you're uh, doing the ice bowl, is it better to have a buddy right behind you with your electronics looking, or is it better to get your holes done, come back five minutes later, give them the time to rest? I, I, I drill, when I drill my holes for the ice school and I tell all the students, I said, always make an extra hole for me or two outside your shack. I says, in, put, two or three holes over here, put two or three holes over here behind. So everybody's drilling a hole and they're spread out over an area right now. And then it quiets down. So the fish that was they were drilling right here maybe runs to these guys over here and these fish that were by these guys runs to them over here. So everybody's pretty much doing the thing at one time, boom, it's quiet. Now if you move, you can move over to these holes a little bit. You know, and by that time, you're gonna see where the fish are biting or I get a call from another group a half a mile away or a mile away. Oh man, we're killing them over here. Now I go, okay, um, who here is it catching no fish? Um, anybody wants to take a little ride? See that tent right over there? See the flag right there? Go slowly, fish go onto the outside of them, creep up there and drill a hole out there. Don't get too close to them. Go around these other guys. And, and that's how we go one at a time into an area instead of, oh, everybody, let's go! <laughs> and they're all gone. So, yeah, you, you know, that's, that's the best thing. You know, so you, you really, if you're with your buddy and you're, you're uh, you know, want to find fit, just drill a lot of holes. You, you, once you've got your GPS out, you got the brake line you're gonna fish, or you know you've been there before, you get the weed edge just open up a whole pile of holes right away. Right. You might not even use it. The first one you drilled and the other 15, 20 of them, yeah, let your buddy drill them. The next time you is drilling, now you gotta drill 20 of them. Okay, so if we had, like my buddy and I, if we got two hours, two guys, two electronics. Yep. Make a Swiss cheese, let yep. it quiet down, and go back and yep. just, just try to find it. Yep. Then you just take your ice scooper and your little chisel on one end if you have them kind. And, just keep going to them and, and opening them up. It's going to take you a long time before you fish every hole and check every hole, and you're going to come across fish. You know, it's getting those initial ones started and, and everything for. You ever fish with more than one pole at a time or no? I always fish with two poles at a time. If, if I'm fishing, I, I usually don't get to fish or I get to, to fish with one pole. You know, and I'm walking around to your tent, to your tent, to your tent, to your tent. You know, so I, the, the, the thing is, is, you know, if you're not used to doing two rods, are you used to doing two rods? There's a lot of people that can't do two rods. And what I tell people, you know, I, I can do it multitudes of ways, but I'll do, do, People go, hey, I can't. I just tell them go like this. Then, if you can't do them, well, you know, just, they, they can do both hands at once. Some people can. Some people can do this. 
you know, and, and concentrate. If they can't concentrate, I just tell them to do two lift your rods at the same time and feel. You know, so you know, yeah, there's multitudes of ways you can do it, but you've got to find out your your best way that you can do it, and keep your holes somewhat far apart if you're using jig and rapplers or swimming type baits. You they'll go over and swim into each other, so they gotta, you know, you you probably should be using a spoon on one and a jig and wrap on the other. If you're using two jig and wraps, they end up you keep moving them. And the other thing about using a jig and wrap make sure after about three or four jigs stop and pause and lift the because it's like a little decoy for pipe it keeps it going on bigger and bigger and bigger the more you jig it the bigger the circle goes then stop it and let it swim back to the center of the hole and you're you're feeling as it's gliding back for a little tick or sometimes about yank the pole out of my hand and a lot of times on a jig and wrap you don't even have to put bait there. In fact, they were made to not use bait on. But people put a little head on them or a little tail on them below it on the end of the hook. Um, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. But just using a plane, that's what um, the finish made it for was with no bait. You didn't need bait on it. Spray some spray on it. Uh, the other thing while I'm walking around, too, I want... If I'm walking around from tent to tent, or I'm just outside, and, and the wind's blowing, we'll say, anybody walk around and it's windy out and just go from hole to hole? You, what size rod do you like to use if you're a longer, longer rod? Right, because they can stand right here and be comfortable. <laughs> Instead of like, you know, bent over because your rod's about this long. And if it is that long, you got that much wind blowing on the line like that, you can't see anything going on, can't feel nothing. And, and so now you got a long rod, you don't have to bend over, you just walk up to the hole. That's what I do when I, when I can talk to you and, and you can see me jigging. And it's only a couple inches off of the, the ice, off the water in the hole. You know, otherwise I'm short, I get bucket back or bend over back or whatever so a longer rod for walking the round maybe a shorter one in your tent and there you gear it goes again you got your walking rods and you got your tent rods you know so like, there is a one rod that actually works for everything and you got the different actions going on right there makes all the difference in the world and then you got your you know even for your bigger lures and you're really jigging with big spoons, you're big jigging with uh, heavy, heavy equipment. They have the heavy, heavier rods, but they all have fast tips on them. So even if you put a heavy <coughs> weight on, that tip will just still bend, and if you got a feel for it, you're still gonna be able to feel it because that weight of the lure is gonna have it bend a little ways and the fish is gonna bend it more. I'll just pass all these around so people can feel the different actions. This is. You, you can tell by just bending the tip just slightly. You don't have to, don't bend it in a circle. <laughs> no, <that's not> a <laughs> it might be stick, yours huh? then. <laughs> you do any dead sticking when you're uh, jigging? Oh, I do a lot of dead sticking. Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorite ways is dead sticking. You know, I put it, I got a bucket and I got a little, you guys got any little little bitty rod holders? I know this, this one right here. You make make this little outfit right here, don't you? That's cool. I like it. And uh, they they I've seen other little uh, rod holders that go on these five gallon buckets. You guys carry them too, or they, they just clip right on. You got them. This is really cool. If you got a electronics, uh, you know, mount you know that you can mount on a five gallon bucket and run around right here. You know these. This is a good little deal on this little tackle package up here cheap they look just like a rapala but having a, a dead rod this would be perfect for having a dead rod and uh, while you're jigging with one you can have one just sitting in there and the thing is is you just watch that rod tip you know and you know, if the minnow quits working like that on you know because you can see it because you want a real light action one when you just got a split shot and a minnow on it when it's 
out here doing like that, and it stops. You take your other rod and go, boop, hit the rod tip, and it starts bouncing again <laughs> like that, and it quits. Boop. Well, you're jigging, you just reach over and hit the rod, and it makes that, wakes the minnow up down there. But when they grab it, they're on. I mean, all of a sudden it can go from do 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 do, whoa, just like that. Because they'll come in for the jigging action of whatever you have down there, and they'll grab the live bait time after time. They won't come in for the live bait going around, but the presentation that you're jigging brings them in, just like a decoy with a pipe, and then they see the minnow, and they can't refuse it then. But if you just had it down there dangling by itself, it isn't gonna be as good as if you got some type of presentation that you're constantly moving and bringing the fish in. The other thing is if you're not seeing fish on your graph before you leave in that 20 to 30 minute time frame period, remember, bring it. You, you jigging it, you know, and if you drop it, the rod tip to the, the hole, that's bottom. That's how you set it. My rod tip gets down by the hole, that's bottom. In fact, I about right here, it's bottom because I want to pound it on the bottom. I don't want to be the rod tip just touching the bottom at the, at the uh, ice hole or the water because if I want to stir up the mud when a fish misses it, I got to stick the, the, the rod tip in the hole and now it's all full of ice when it freezes up. So you want to keep it about that far from the ice when it touches the bottom so you can put it down by the hole and you know you're flopping it on the bottom and then pick it up. So just remember that when you set your your rods and everything, that's where you, you want it right there. But if you're not seeing fish four or five feet jerks. I mean just go nuts, just blah, blah, blah. you know you don't care, you're ready to leave anyhow, right? <laughs> Start doing this also, whoa there's a fish on the graph. That tracks them. You realize when you keep your lure X far off the bottom, if a fish is back over there at, at the end of all these chairs, is he going to see it over here? No. Because sometimes just the curvature of the bottom is like the curvature of the earth. You can't, you can see a balloon up in the air, but you can't see the balloon sitting on the pavement two miles down the road or a mile. But if it's up in the air, you see it perfect. If you wanted it, you could go over and get it. Well, that's the thing is with your presentation, whether you're bluegill fishing, perch fishing, walleye fishing, northern fishing, you got to go crazy sometimes. Not only that, it's, it gets the vibrations going in the water column, and they, they start, you start pulling fish in from a greater distance. And this way, they're going to see it. You're going to try it for a while. If nothing happens now, it's time to move. But if you if you don't, uh, if you start doing that and you're catching fish, just start doing it every once in a while and bring these fish in, back into where you were. You know, just going crazy. You know, it makes a big, big, big difference. Uh, you when, know. When you're dead sticking, what style of hooks are you doing? I'm just using uh, like a Daiichi. Uh, bleeding bait hook, a little tiny treble red hook. Yeah, you know, some you some like people treble better than a single hook. Then? And I can I, I'll take or leave either or. You know, if I use a single single hook, I'll, I'll go to a little bit bigger bigger hook. You know, probably a size six anyhow. You know, any, at least a six on a single, and probably an eight on yeah, a treble. And I like red. Some people go, well, gee, the fish can see red. I go, maybe that's why they like it. <laughs> Some people go, well, red, red's supposed to be a color they can't see. I go, well, maybe that's why they like it. They can't see it. So it's a winning combination no matter who wants to talk and pro or con on it. I don't see any negative either way. Whatever, whatever it is, I'll, that's why I use it. I just like red hooks, you know. I mean, I catch fish on gold ones. I catch fish on... I mean, I like gold. I catch a lot of perch, and you know, sometimes the wall. I like it when the when the red wears off of my uh, Daiichi hooks and they turn gold. <coughs> you know, I, I think that's you know. But I start out with red, and if you catch a lot enough of them, you you got a gold one. 
Do you do anything to your hooks uh, as far as uh, alteration? I bend them the out gap, just a little bit, open the gap up just a little bit. Sharp so sticky sharp? They're sticky sharp, every one of them. are sticky sharp, I open the gap on the troubles just a little bit, whether I'm casting lures or trolling lures or jigging lures, because when they grab them or a tip up one, when they grab it, it, it's pulled when they try to get rid of it because it's out a little bit. If they try to blow it out, sometimes it'll stick in them inside their mouth. If they're kicked in, they can just blow it right back out. You know, I mean, you, you probably get two extra fish that you know, if you had 10 fish blow it out, eight of them are going to blow it out, two of them aren't going to be able to blow it out. So, you just take by the barb off uh, for the walleye, or you leave it on? Leave it on. I mean, you can, you can take the but you know you better never ever get a loose line on it you know because it's going to get off you know the barb helps a little bit you know I, and when i go to manitoba and some other places i gotta pinch the barb in i really can't say you know it hurts anything i in fact it doesn't even hurt me if i stick myself with you know the barbs in and i can pull it right back out the easiest hook job you ever can imagine but as long as you got pressure on, I think they're better. I think having no barbs is better if you can keep that pressure on that fish all the time because now it's going to go all the way to the bend in the hook. And it's not, that barb isn't going to hang it up somewhere past the barb. It's going to drill it right through. But you just got to keep a little bit of pressure on all the time. Your rod tip's got to be bent. If you can keep that rod tip bent, you know, it's not going to fly. There you go. <laughs> I, I would say something, but like well, a couple of my outdoor reader friends say to me, but I, I, I can't say what they say. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not bad. It's just, you know, <laughs> they, just, they call me on the phone and they, <laughs> but now they do it. You know, they see how many fish you get compared to how many you get when you play with them. And I do it open water fishing too. I'll just crank them five, six pound walleyes right on the surface, right in. If I get a fish on the surface, it's coming in just like those bass fishermen do, <laughs> especially when I'm using fire line. <laughs> Once you got them coming, you better keep them coming. You know, that's just the way I feel about everything. Geez, I know there's got to be a million more things. I, I got it up here, just somebody's got to pull it out of my head here. Um, the, when you're drilling holes, do you have a thing where you only use hand augers in the shallows, or uh, you use gas augers everywhere? I, I, it depends on the thickness of the ice, what augers I use. Like early in the season, you know, it's more of a hassle for me to carry my Strike Master Electric or, you know, my Honda Strike Master. This thing is cooler than cool right here. This is uh, right here. This is a nice. Uh, unit right here you know they, they they're making them better and better all the time but you know early in the year ice is yank thick you're better off with carrying a hand auger it's just it's fast pretty much you're not going to tire yourself all, out but you tire yourself out carrying it well once the ice gets that thick you're going to tire yourself out doing this where now it's feasible to carry this wherever you go and you you're more comfortable so it's the time of the year it's not the water depth and, and people say well geez the gas engine you know my electric I love the electric the way I, the reason I love my electric because there's no gas fumes I can put it in my tent and no gas fumes in my tent um, you know it, and it's uh, you know it, it's it's quiet too but quietness because I have people that have dove under the ice and checked this out for me. That makes as much noise as my electric does going through the ice. They can't hear what you hear, but they can hear like, and, and the hand auger is maybe a little less because it's not, not you, you can't drill as hard and as fast as that, you know, but still, they, you know, you're not, you know, people will say, oh, the noise scares them. Well, the noise scares you more than it does the fish. It's, uh, you know, so don't worry about what you're hearing because the fish aren't hearing the same same exact thing. <coughs> you know, the electric is going to make 
and the, and the hand auger, you know, they all make the same kind of noises that the fish and the vibration, you know, just get it, it just gets it done quicker with a electric or gas auger. Mark, talk a little bit about the color, glow in the dark, not glow in the dark. Okay, I'm, he, he had his hand okay, up here first. I, I'll catch you. Don't let me forget okay. it either. What do you consider safe ice in the water? Well, they say two inches. I used to go out on an inch when I used to wear no fear at, at December 12th. So what do you recommend now? <laughs> uh, I, I would, I, I, seems i more safety conscious than ever. I would say anything uh, three inches is, you know, you know, plenty safe for the average person. You know, I, I, I wouldn't take school students on, you know, at six inches for school students. That's where I feel comfortable of, of anything and even putting their... But that's walking or with, with machines? Machines, six inches, you know. Machines, I wouldn't put them on three inches. You can, but I, I wouldn't because it's never ever same three inches. It could go, you know, your luck or my luck, it'd be like that when I stop. I mean, I've seen it, you know, especially out here. I would be a scary thing with current coming through all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and everything, <laughs> yeah, you guys know. But you were asking me about uh, color, color choices and uh, glow in the dark versus not glow. I, I use glow, I love glow. What color glow? Doesn't matter what color glow, I'll tell you why. Early and late in the evening, or early in the morning, late in the evening, I'll outfish, we can use the same exact size, same exact color, but if I have a little bit of glow tape, I have a little bit of glow eye on it, or I have a glow lure, and you have a same, same lure, but it isn't glow, that person, even if he's got hands of bricks, is gonna outfish it. I don't know why, but I always charge them up about from dark 30 in the morning till about 9 30 in the morning you better be using a glow lure i don't can't tell you which one or whatever and it red, goes you know it's, red blue don't matter don't matter what color as long as it got some glow in it i don't know why night time also yep night time about four o'clock 4 30. really i start about 3 30 because i want to get a jump on everything <laughs> you know so you know because i know i'm getting close i just don't want to miss you know, some days they may start a little earlier, but and then that, that will go right in. And then, then there can be a little lull in there about dark time, and their eyes have to readjust. But then I'll still charge it back up. Make sure you get a charging box. It's the best. I mean, you can take a flashlight, but a charging box you'll have a longer charge to your lures than you will just a flashlight. Oh, a black light. So, well, any yeah. yeah the, I mean, he's got a little bit of yeah. Black light. Yeah, little black lights, whatever. You know, any type of light is better than just a plain flashlight. You know, it'll last a little bit longer. So many yeah. of the new plastics nowadays are glows. Yeah. And many of them are, are glows and blue and green and orange and pink. Yeah, they got a lot of plastics that glow. Yeah, all colors, yeah. I've done really, really well on glow reds. Glow reds? And glow blues. They glow blues. Yeah, I, I like all those colors. Yeah. Anything, you know, glow is better than anything not glowing. But now in the middle of the day from 9.30 till 3 o'clock, natural colors of some sort. If it's a, a cloudy lake, you might want to go to UVs and fluorescents. You know, so, uh, you know, or say it's just clear, clear, you want to stick to your natural colors. Maybe you're, you're uh, you know, glow glowing, you know your golden black or this is a glow color right there but i'd go you know just with a you know rainbow color or a silver black uh, fire tiger any of that stuff uh, makes a big difference i'll pass this around but make sure i get it back <laughs> i got one nobody's seen this yet it's made for open water but it can be used for it's called a snap wrap It'll glide further. I played with the one I have at home a little bit in open water this year, and it glow. It yeah, it glow, It glides 
further instead of like a normal wrap level swim in a big circle and when you stop it it kind of this thing kind of like you know it takes a glide pattern right away what, what do you mean by op open water this Cast is going to be an open mean? loop no it's going to be a jig and lure for open water you can use it in the detroit river you can use it in lake st Clair. you're drifting and oh, okay. and working it <laughs> Anybody want to see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going to give it back to me, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the whole thing is, the whole shape of it is oh, different. Yeah, flat head, too. Yeah. Does that work the way that lender, yeah. slinky or whatever they call oh, it, no. jumps out underneath the hole? Oh, about no. 10, 12 feet? No, well, I don't know how far it'll go off. It depends on how far you let it go. Like, if you just let it go from your hole, or from the surface and opened your bale, yeah, it'd probably go a long ways. And they're gonna make those in smaller sizes? The, I asked them today for the first time. They are gonna make them, but I don't think they'll be in time for this year. You know, that's what everybody wants is a smaller size. Mm -hmm. That's probably yep. seven. Six. Six, yeah. yeah. You have a particular color during the daytime? It all depends on the water clarity. Yeah, like I say, UV color sometimes if it's a little dingy. Sometimes later in the year, the water starts running down the holes. It'll turn a lake from clear to murky, dingy color. And then UV, UV seems to work really good when a clear lake starts to get dingy um, or runoff or anything like that, or a dingy lake, it, you know, UV. And then fluorescent colors, you know, like your, we'll just say that, right, even though it's glow in the dark, a fluorescent green like the head of that. Uh, oranges, and chartreuses, in dirty water. You know, that's what's going to dictate daytime. And if it's just, uh, you know, the lake is fairly clear, or maybe even tan tanny, you could go to, to from the fluorescent colors to natural colors. Then. Or it's a clear lake or something. You can go just to your, your golden blacks, your silver and blacks, your perches and stuff like that. But I, I, you know, I, all these these colors are that are natural. I also put glow in the dark on the tail and on the eye. I, so I got a set of natural ones that I've modified with glow on them too. So how do you make it glow? Just just buy jig paint in a little tiny uh, a toothpick and just and then dip it in and then go around and put a little little like a bee line, like a bumblebee, you just do one around the tail. A couple, on, a dot on each eye and a bumblebee around the tail, and that's all the glow in the dark you ever need on anything. So if you do it the poor man's way, use some of your lures you have now, turn them into glow in the dark, and pretty soon you start utilizing the lures you never used before. Well, yeah, I, 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 I customize a lot of things, you know. Yeah, I've done what you say, you know, put little rubber skirts on them, put, you know, little, in fact, that's how we came up with some of the gulp little little baits for, uh, you know, panfish and for, you know, like the little, the little rubber eye that gulp has. There's a rubber eye, it looks like you yanked it out of the eye sack. It's even got the little dingle danglies on them. Like oh, you yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, came up, I came up with that one for them. It was the eyeball. You know, so yeah, I, I, I uh, play with a lot of things. I just carve out the plastic how I want it, you know, and then I send it to them. We used to take a, a spoon around here that's called a Kent spoon, or there's a bunch of them manufactured. They're all essentially a blade with a soldered onto a tube jig on it. Put the tube jig upside down. So the tentacles are pointing toward the rod tip. Oh, cool. And uh, when you jig it up, they will go like this. Right. And then when, when you drop it down, it swims off to the side, just like a paddle. Yeah. And of course, the tentacles fold up. When it hits the bottom, it starts coming back to vertical. Those tentacles are going like this. So when the fish are on, boy, boom. And what's that called? Kenneth's. Uh, well, Kenneth's. 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 K
Maybe I, I, them well, they've they been around for years, some of them, Ken. Yeah. Even if I think I've seen a guy using them, but he didn't call it that. It must yeah, been. yeah, I've got some he made up in here that are really nice that look like it. Yeah. Sounds you like it. I, I think it. I could catch some fish on it. I've seen a guy <laughs> over on, uh, on Beta Knock using one of them a long time ago. I, just, I thought he just, you know, kind of winged it like I do it, being funny, but he actually, they actually came from down here then. Oh, them things like shoot ten, ten foot underneath your own back and stuff. They really shoot around, some of them. Sounds cool. I'd love to use one of them. You know, I'm always willing to open my horizons and expand my knowledge. Uh, you know, I, I say, you know, I, I learn from you people, you learn from me, you know, it's, it's what seminars are all about. Some people think they're going to just teach everybody here. I, I glean things from you guys and gals. So, you know, I, I, I came here with an open mind, and you know, I leave with a couple little tidbits of information, and hopefully, you leave with a couple tidbits of information. And you know, that's you know, and don't be afraid to not email me. Email me anytime you want to. I mean. If I'm home, I got the time. I mean, sometimes it takes me a little while to get back to people, but I try to answer every question that somebody gives me. And as intelligent and as as uh, as accurate as I possibly can. So you know, I'm I'm always available. I don't put myself I put my shoes on the same way as everybody else does here. I you know I I, I always want my questions answered. So. You know, make sure, you know, if you ever have a problem or something, or you're going, a lot of people say, oh, geez, I'm going to Mille Lacs, or I'm going to go Gibeek, I'm going to Saginaw Bay, or I'm going to Green Bay, or, you know, what should I do? Well, I'll give them some for instances, but it's all time of the year timing, you know. The thing I have to know is what time of year you're going. Then I can tell you where, what you got to use and where you should start anyhow. And that's what fishing is, you know, even in the winter time. You start out in the shallows and you work deeper as the season goes on and then here at the end of, a lot of times you, you get you're either deep or you're shallow. So that's just the way it is that you you have migrations of these fish and just because you caught them right here today doesn't mean in a month from now they're going to be here. You know so you know but yeah just uh, you know anybody else have any questions on anything here? <coughs> Yeah. When you're dead sticking and you got a split shot in the middle, are you doing like a drop shot or are you keeping the split shot on the bottom or are you just kind of keeping it a few feet off the bottom to get Never, the middle a little bit to swim around? Never thought about putting it on the bottom like a perch rig, but no, I've always keep it up above. Okay. You know, but I can't see why that drop shot in way or a perch rig, it wouldn't work as long as you, you know, had a decent lead and you want to you always want a little bit heavier mono or fluorocarbon I would use coming off so it gets it away from here if there's current you don't want it so limp that it's down here wrapping around your other line you want it to get out away from it you understand you know what I'm talking yeah. about okay. oh, yeah yeah yeah, I, you let me know how that works try yeah. it then I'll teach me something yeah. okay <laughs> sounds good to me I like to, to get good information, <laughs> you know, I, I can't, you know, I'd try it after you, you explained it, I just never, you know, if I went perch fishing, that's the way I'd do it, <laughs> you know, I would try for walleyes, but I, I caught walleyes on perch rigs, so why wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when you're tip up fishing, do you use that split shot on your leader as well, or do you, do you fish without the split shot? No, I have the split shot on, but I keep the split shot about yay fire up above the minnow, so that he can, he got too close and they can't go very far. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yep. What's the latest in the evening you'll typically fish for walleye? What's that? Yeah. What's the latest you would fish for walleye on ice? Playtime. All night long if you got the time. You know, I've fished all night long. I guess I, I'm used to fishing all night long for walleyes. Um, I grew up. Since so I've been three years old, and fish from dark to daylight. Except and the moon is in a certain spot. Right? Yeah, and the moon. Yeah, you just know it. And, and I've had to do it because I guided 206 days a year. So I hopefully we'd be done with our limit by the time it got right there. People missed fish or 
messed up. I was like, oh, man. What, what do you mean by the clothes? You know, what do you mean by the moon? From at night, the horizon when it comes look up? Look at my book up there, and it'll show you a picture, a diagram of where the moon has to be. I don't care if it's full. I don't care if it's a sliver. I don't care if it's a half. I don't care. If you can see the moon coming up or the moon going down, mm -hmm. if the moon is right here and it's going up, you might get another fish or a bite uh, tonight. On the clock or something? Yeah, well, you, you, it rises, the moon rises like the sun sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, and then other times, the moon's going down, so when the moon gets right here, as it goes down, you better get to where you, the last time you had a bite that night. <laughs> Maybe it was up here when you started, and you had a bite accidentally somewhere, and now it's right here. Let's get back over there quick. That's the way I always used to think. Now you can't even keep them off. Until all of a sudden, boom, it sets and you can't see it no more. You don't get no more bites very often. And I used to be faced with that all the time. I'd like, man, I gotta get my, you know, I only got so many hours here, you know, and I'm like freaking out. I gotta get these people their limit. And I know I'm under a time, they don't know I'm under a time constraint. And I'll tell them it, but it goes in this ear and out that ear. It's like, you know, you know I mean, it's a lot. You know, once in a while they remember what I said. You know, but it's the gospel. I don't know what it is, but it is. So when the moon's coming up to right here, it's all good. So if, if you're not catching fish, just keep moving, moving, moving until you see them or start catching them. Once you start catching them, it's hand over fist action. Anybody else ever see that in this room here or paid attention to that? Pay attention to it. You're gonna go. You'll just is, blow is your mind. Cloudy, cloudy. Don't matter school? if it's cloudy. It's just don't matter. You can still see where the moon is because it's dark out. You can uh -huh. see it shining. It's a little, you know, white speck through the clouds, but uh -huh. you know, you can still tell where it is. Aren't the, the solar tables right. predicated on moon or being probably. overhead or yeah, under probably the foot? Yeah, probably. I know. You know, I never pay attention to the well, solar tables, but I'm probably are. sure they probably are in correspondence with that. Well, yeah, I bet yeah, if you that look. That would be my next question, because sometimes you have full moon, sometimes you have no moon. Right. Yeah, yeah on no, no moons, it's all night long. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it can happen at any time. But I'm just telling you, if you even see it with your own yeah, eyes, yeah. it's coming up. Okay. It's said. not a rocket scientist thing anymore, people. It's a guaranteed, if you get off the couch and get out there, you're going to catch fish before it gets here. The other thing is when it gets here, get off the couch because you're going to catch fish before it sits. That's all I can tell you. I don't know why. I don't care if it's a, a sliver. I don't care if it's a half, a big, huge moon. But if the moon's up bright all night long, I've caught fish like crazy during that time. I hated it. I hated it because I could read... A newspaper out there while I was driving my boat, mm -hmm. you know, and and I'm and I'm sure I look like a big cloud going across the surface over all these fish. They can silhouette my boat. I mean, I caught fish, but I knew I was. It was going to be a tough night. I, I'm just <coughs> more often than not, it was a tough night. Do you, do you think because the walleyes are up shallow and not deep at that particular time? Yeah, in, at night there, I caught them deep, but if I had to put categorized, they're going to be 15 feet and shallower at times. They're going to be relating to humps. They're going to be relating to the brakes. They're going to be relating to the weed edges. Or, you know, something about, you know, they like to come in and be around structure. They're just not going to be at night because they're looking for crayfish or bugs or minnows or whatever. How's this? Just open water or ice too with the moon? Ice, ice too. If, but the hard part is, how can you, it, if you're on fish and you know where that you were catching them, that's why you drill holes from right on the break up on into sometimes the edge of the weeds from where the break is to the edge of the weeds, drill a bunch of holes along there. That's your only way you control. I mean, you control up and down. But you can go from hole to hole to hole in the winter time until you find them that way too. And you and your buddy should split up a long ways that night because it could happen here or it could happen a block down. They, a lot of times that's just the way it is. But if you find them at night, 
when the moon is rising and setting like you see. It's the same thing. I mean, you you got your five on, especially when they come into one little area, you got your five right now. You know. Is wind direction now? No, wind direction doesn't have any bearing. Never, never stopped you from fishing. No, you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, in open water, I have the tools to slow down to the exact speed, no matter if it's 30 miles an hour or glass calm, whether it's eight foot waves or whether it's glass calm. I have the tools to present my methods at the correct speed. You know, people say, oh, the wind is from the east, the fish bite the least. You know, I've seen the wind from the east and I can't keep the fish off. You know, a lot of times, yeah, it is kind of cruddy fishing, but if you believe and you know you've fished with you have so many years and you've done this method, <coughs> you've done this method and this method, this method, this method, you just start going through methods before you, you know, you, you just change methods instead of what you're doing. Just remember that all, at all times. Change methods before you change the method. You know, and, and, and you're going to be safe and you're going to be more successful than anybody else out there. I mean, I go out, I've got skunk many times. I'm not embarrassed to say it, but I learn from it. The thing is, if you get skunked, you better learn from it. And, and I do. I learn from every time I make mistakes out there, you know, and I know what I did wrong. So, you know, I, I don't try to candy coat anything. And like I told everybody, I get headaches out there fishing at times because I'm, I'm concentrating so hard and trying to, you know, if it's in open water and it's eight foot waves, I'm trying to go at, you know, a mile an hour and it wants to push me five, you know. <laughs> you know so that it's, it's not easy, but it, it, it made me the best I could be. You know, it made me think about what I'm doing out there. So I do a lot of thinking um, and I enjoy teaching. That's my, my, Thing nowadays is teaching people to be better than they were today for tomorrow. They're better tomorrow for listening to me, for reading about what I have to write about, for uh, watching things I tell on television. And that's where my heart and I am is I, I'm, I'm a give back person. To I, I got this mass of information from the best of the best why let it die with me? I've been fishing with the best. I, I should try to try to make your fishing simpler instead of making you guess what you, if you're doing things right anymore. You know, and so that's why I real my books aren't just me. My books are all the people I've fished with, all their ideas. You know, you know they're they're mine. They're all, I can't I'm I'm not that kind of person to go I I I and me me me. You know, I, I learn from everybody, you know, and, and that's why I think my articles that I write and when I do TV and when I do magazines and, and my books, it's coming from here. It's all hard facts. It's not coming off the top of my head. It's not, I'm not going to steer people into the, the wrong lane for a head-on collision somewhere and they go out and fail. Whatever I say, if you do it the right way, you're going to be more successful tomorrow than you are today, you know. And I can even take that to the bank, you know. And anybody else have any questions on on everything that I've been talking about? It's got to be, you know. I, I don't want to wrap it up and have somebody not get their question answered. You know, I I really want to give as much as I can give in one session here, and you know if uh, if that. If everybody's satisfied, you know, uh, you know, just uh, if my books are up there. If you want get one, I'll autograph it for you. There's a nighttime video. I only got four of them with me. Um, I couldn't uh, find any of my autograph sheets. I guess I ran out. I didn't didn't run any more off. So otherwise, I'd be able to sign autographs on my eight by tens. But uh, no, I really appreciate everybody coming here tonight and prying things out of my little bitty brain up here and uh, you know I hope to see everybody on the water somewhere or at the show or whatever and if anything helped you 
let me know because then I'll be happy. And that's <laughs> what makes Mark happy is that I help somebody. Are you at Frank's tomorrow? I'll be at Frank's tomorrow and I'll be at Bass Pro on Sunday. So in Auburn Hills. So Did they have a show in Minnesota yet? Yep. Yep, St. Paul. They wanted me to be, but I I was filming a show with Scentlock out in in Kansas. <laughs> what, what kind of what kind of ice yeah, yeah. out there? <laughs> <laughs> Ones with horns. <laughs> I stuck it on my Facebook site. Mm -hmm. You see it, just <laughs> five and a half inches around at the bases. Oh, oh. Yeah, my buddy got one same size, only his is 20 inches wide on the inside. Mine was a little bit less. But, uh, no, Steve Lamb? Huh? Steve Lamb? It was uh, a farmer that I ran into. He was my um, co-angler partner. He goes, oh, I got a thousand acres, and there's deer running all over, and I want somebody to shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, okay, well, I'm an exterminator. <laughs> He says, but you got to shoot my sister a doe. I said, oh, no problem. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's, that's my hobby is deer hunting. I have 30, now I got 34 120 to 182 class bucks on the wall. And I treat deer hunting the same as walleye fishing. They're both the same. They're both the same. They're creatures of edges. Once you start reading the edges, and there's edges everywhere and I'm even out in the prairie and I can find edges out there you know and and, and that's that's why I tell people I do a few few seminars they hire me for for whitetail hunting you know people are figuring out that I actually do get big bucks and I do it all on my own and I've done it you know my grandpa and dad taught me that and then I just got better on my own and uh, but I just, you know, I you know, when I'm in Michigan, I got some Michigan bucks that are over 120. I, I strictly hunt the sand dunes for them, and I spot and stalk, and and it's. It, but some of my shots are phenomenal. But you gotta have shooting sticks, and you know, it, it, once in a while, you, you know, if you see any of them seminars that I got with with uh, whitetail, you should, if you're interested in whitetail hunting, you know, I I can. I can be anal about that stuff, and I, I, I could stalk them blowing with the wind dead into them with the right equipment, and, 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 and you got to go through such a process, and the cameraman has to go through such a process. Um, they just, you know, like the last time, uh, last year, it, it got down to the last minute, and I had to go in, and so I sprayed scent all over, just like I say scent on baits, well now I'm trying to get rid of scent. I mean, it's dripping off my clothes and dripping off of everything and my weapon and everything. I have a stainless steel and I have him dripping and deer are walking from here to that away from me and just not even paying attention. And they had to walk right into my wind and this 145 comes right up, right dead. I'm walking at him because I can't, and finally I can't walk no further. And he keeps walking right at me and he turns at 35 yards right there and I was able to get him, and the cameraman said, "Told I didn't want to take him, but the cameraman said, you got to take him, Mark, you got to take him, you weren't talking that loud. But he says, we you got a, we got a show and a half, he says, we got a squirrel coming down and sitting on your shoulder and walking back up the tree and then running in front of you, because I, I move so slow, and I got, I use a shooting stick, and, and I can walk through the woods without making a sound, and I just feel with that. He had a bipod, so he started doing it too. You can feel if you should put your foot down. It takes a long time, but yeah, I could do a whole seminar on whitetail hunt. I love it. I love, but it walleye fishing made me better at whitetail hunting, and whitetail hunting makes me better at walleye fishing because it's edges and it makes you start thinking. You know, when I when I look at current breaks in the river out here, there's edges in there. <coughs> Anybody ever see the edges out here in the in yeah, just uh, plain current in the middle? Moves, just a, moves, yeah, moves. yeah, you see the smooth spot in the rough spot. Start running down that edge of that smooth and rough spot. You're gonna catch more than if you're over that far and in the <coughs> rough or in totally in the smooth. 
run on the edge of it. It's the little things that make you all the difference, people. It's never a big thing. It's never the the one lure or you know the one color or everybody's looking for that magic black box lure. It's what you do with what you have and do it right. You know that's the best I can tell you on anything. Anybody got that one little magic lure I got to take with me for today or tomorrow or the next day? <laughs> I'm sure they do. Never got the end of my line. But no, I, they're they're going to be around here. So if you need any need any help with any products here, I'll help you. Everybody else will help you in here too. And uh, if you want autographs, I got a sharpie. So it's a pleasure with everybody coming. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.